Hello, this is Dartfish Dave. I've been tweeting pictures and videos of strum motions, and I haven't seen too many tutorials online of how to do a strum motion, so I'm going to make a strum motion here in Dartfish 8. So the first thing we want to do is go up to the top and click on the strum motion tab. And you can see I have a video clip in here of Byron Jones shattering the uh, world record broad jump. So it says to drag a clip into the video display and select the in and out to refine the segment. So we're going to make a strum motion of that particular moment when he does the leap. So the first thing I'm going to do is drag the clip in here and I'm going to hit library and get rid of that so you can see the workspace. So here are your in and out points to set the cue for in and out. I'm going to drag the playhead there's the broad jump that we're going to use so I want to get to the first frame that I'd like to use so we'll go ahead and select that right there and hit the set cue in drag and set cue out so it's going to select just that portion of the video and I will click the button that says next. Now it says click two static objects in the background of the first image to set alignment markers. A featureless background may require more markers. So typically I just select some things that are not going to move. So we can select the different markers here and go ahead and hit start. You see the little green flag waved and this space filled, so it processed that. I'll go ahead and hit next. And from here, I'm going to click start, and it will show me what that uh, strom motion image would look like, the background. If there was some panning going on, that would be a much larger image. So I'm going to go ahead and click next again. So now here you get to pick out your clones that actually fill the screen and I have a couple tips for you in order to do this the first thing I want to do is to go and change the jump size to just one frame I like to actually see every single one of the frames so that I can um, advance to the best one so now if I click this button I'm going to jump one frame at a time forward or back so that we can select the clones that we'd like to use alright so the first clone is his maximum arm swing. One of the things that I like to do in order to really zoom into the image is click on the magnifying glass. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so that I can see the image better. You have a number of tools over here to the right. For this particular tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and use this rectangular clone tool. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to surround the athlete right here I'm going to click and pick the other clones that I want so let's say this first one you can also use this pen tool as a freehand clone tool and I like this one sometimes because it allows you to make the image a little bit cleaner so this time I'm going to use the freehand tool and I will tra trace around the edge I'm trying to go as close as I can to the athlete now if for some reason you let go prior to making a ring all the way around you'll see that the top part of the athlete is cut off here I do not want to use this one so I'm just going to go ahead up to the select the clone and once I do that I can click on these images here and then erase those deleted erase those that uh, that clone and go ahead and make a new one Let's try that again now one of the other helpful tools 
is to use the preview window up here to see what your clones will look like. So I'm going to zoom back out and now click on preview. And I can see my first clone is here. The second one is there. They overlap a little bit. So I like what I see so far. I'm going to go back to the clones and then go ahead and advance a little bit further. So I'll go ahead and click on the freehand tool again. Just surround the athlete. And for each clone I make, click preview. I like how that's looking so far. Back to clones. Gonna go ahead find the next image that I like surround the athlete again as tightly as possible click the preview again again I think that looks good so you just continue this process of going back and forth between the clones and using the preview window So I'll select this as the last one. Go back and preview just one more time. And that looks good for the purposes of this tutorial. So now I have my clones. If I wanted to go back to any one of them, you could just hit this jump to previous clone selection. Maybe I didn't like the first one and I wanted to change it, I could go all the way to this first clone, go back to the clones window, and I could um, choose a different one if I wanted to. But for the purposes of this, they look good. So if I advance through here, I can see all the different clones that I selected. I like all these, so I'm going to go ahead and click Publish. And now I get an option to use either a stroll motion still image or a video. So we'll do both of these. So first I'll click on Stroh Motion Still Image. Click Next. Give it a name. Once it's done it will tell you your document has successfully been published. And here's what our Stroh Motion image looks like once it's complete. Again, the quality or the clarity of the Stroh Motion is really dependent on the quality of the video. You know, if the video is a little bit blurry, um, better to shoot in bright daylight and use a high shutter speed and you'll be able to capture a few more clones. So let's say I like this image but I want to put one more clone in this space right here. Okay, I'm going to go back in, start back, Dartfish back up, and I'm going to change my jump forward to put another one right there. Just use the box tool. Surround him quickly. Hit publish. Make a still image. I'm going to give it the same name so I can replace the other one. Now you can see there is another clone before the athlete lands. I also don't like how the last one wound up. It's a little blurry. So go back into Dartfish again. Let this one advance a little bit further. So let's say we wanted to use this clone instead of the one that's previously there. So I'm going to go to the one I don't like. I'm going to select the moving tool and just click on it. Delete those. I'm going to advance this again a little bit further to something that looks more clear. And I'm going to select this clone instead. So I'm going to publish it one more time. And that looks quite a bit better. So you can see uh, as you do this, 
you may have to go back and select different clones in order to clarify what they look like. There's lots of ways to use Photoshop to clarify this image. Now let's go back in and actually make a video. So if you choose publish, you can also generate a stream motion video. Hit next. I like this MPEG-4 H.264 HD format. Once it's done creating your stream motion, it will add the video to the tray. And you can close this window. If I open up my library, now my video is here. Before I play this video, I want to save this stream motion project. So perhaps I want to go back and create a different clone after the fact when I look at the video. So I'm going up here to save. And I'm going to save this as a stream motion project. Now once I open up the player, click on this drone's stream motion, you can see that the image is there. Dartfish puts a logo down here on the bottom. So I like to add my own logo uh, right over the top of that. But there is a quick tutorial on how to make a stroh motion using Dartfish. This example was the Jones long jump world record. Hope you enjoyed that.